Who you know twist bras like a dime a dozen A dozen dimes being gone make them lie on their cousin Fall from sex and clubs they drink Stomp you out like Kirk Frank And keep a sack of that dank to help me think Y'all players need to vibe my Mac Instead of standing on my coattail Steady trying to rob my back Tell me how you want it now Military minded and y'all gonna find it Kinda hard to guard my squad Who you know game ready Recite same steady Ice a chain heavy and recite flame deadly Pop Don P with him Only if you gonna be with him Like Tiggin every n*** with him Keep it real it's plain Who can deal with Zane? Uh. Zane Copeland Jr. Born July 11th, 1982 was Lil Zane the wackest rapper of all time? Today's question spawns from a 2011 Vlad TV interview of rapper The Game being asked to list his top 5 wackest rappers of all time. First on his list coming in at number 5 was today's feature Lil Zane. The two, shall I say, were actually friends at the time and The Game made sure to clarify that he likes Zane as a person but when it came to the music, he was never really a fan. Tyler, the creator, also came at Lil Zane, but more in a Twitter troll way about it, in efforts to get Zane's attention and stir up anything he could to promote his debut album that had dropped the same year. Their gripe with Lil Zane, in my opinion, at the time, stemmed from Zane being an easy target and low-hanging fruit. Lil Zane to me got into music at a really young age, so like most kids are impressionable of adults they see having success or deemed cool in their world, so tend to model parts of themselves to mimic what they see and enjoy about that person. Lil Zane being in the music industry since 10 years old, it makes sense what his career became, which was a lot of imitating and not enough bringing himself to the mix as his own artist. But for a time in music history, it worked. Lil Zane, not for nothing, had his own or was a part of a few hit records in the late 90s, early 2000s, like his 112 feature Anywhere in 1999 that was a top 5 US R&B song or his single Callin' Me in 2000 that was number one on the US rap charts and number 21 on the Hot 100. Lil Zane had become a star around that time before the South had their big early 2000s run and would become a huge staple in the rap game and Lil Zane benefited from being around and young enough at the right time. Also he's from Atlanta, Georgia so that helped in him being allowed to ride the wave. For the short time it lasted, of course, because the window for Lil Zane was closing quickly. He released his debut album in the year 2000 that was a top 25 US album, top 4 in R&B and rap, selling 7,000 copies the first week, 40,000 in the second week and close to 500,000 to date. Disappointing numbers compared to the Lil Zane fanfare at the time and the success of his charting singles like Callin' Me where many compared him to a pop version of Tupac Shakur. From there Lil Zane lost touch with being the influence as his career began to be taken in directions that wouldn't benefit his future success until his window of potential had closed. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to Jay Coleman once again for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Lil Zane is a rapper born in Yonkers, New York, and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, that always knew he wanted to be a star. When he heard and saw artists like Criss Cross and Another Bad Creation, who were young kids turned big screen stars, Zane wanted to be just like them. His mom would take him to her salon and he'd perform for the ladies in the chairs and it was then he knew he wasn't shy and that becoming a rap star was what he wanted to be. He formed a group with his brother and cousin and his father would manage them, taking them to perform at local talent shows, one of them with a young Usher Raymond who won the show, Lil Zane and his crew coming in second. They were signed to RCA at that point and given the name Chronic, releasing one video and not much else. At that point he met Tupac that complimented him for reminding him of himself. They'd sit on RCA for three years until it was realized they weren't going too much further on that label. The group dissolved but Zayn continued solo 
linking with 112 and by chance and relationship to a past manager, was able to be featured on their hit song and taken with them on tour. From there, Lil Zane blew up into the hottest rap name in the game mainstream. Stunt number one, Misguided. One of the main ways child stars lose their popularity and positive direction in an industry such as music is because they get into a business world that they understandably know very little to nothing about. They become tied to managers and labels that know a little more than them and have intentions to use that artist for whatever their gain or agenda may be and it hurts the unsuspecting young artist the most when his future is derailed because of it. After the 112 feature on Anywhere blew up, everyone wanted a piece of Lil Zane, including Diddy himself seeing as Zane was still an unsigned artist at the time. In a meeting with his manager and Diddy, both asking Zane who he wanted to go with, Zane chose his manager who was starting his own label situation over Bad Boy Records, leading Zane to Priority Records who sat on his debut album for more than two years and missed the mark to capitalize on Zane's popularity. Priority were still caught up in his debut Money Stretch single and Calling Me's success and didn't plan for an album rollout. Because of this, his debut shipped low and reflected in first to second week sales as they released more albums. I think they underestimated Lil Zane's status among the young audience in that he was kind of the Bow Wow before Bow Wow, except not promoted as such by his label dropping the ball on his all too important initial success. Zayn would say himself that he was taken advantage of often in the beginning of his career because he simply didn't understand what was going on. He was a kid, so one bad situation after the other made Lil Zayn miss his window as a young star, or at least his star lasting as long as it should have. Maybe signing with Puff was the better move? Stunt number two, to Lil Zayn or not to Lil Zayn? Borrowing from stunt number one and the misguidance of Zane's career, his label Priority Slash Capital Records decided for his second album, The Big Zane Theory 2003, they would bring something different and exciting to Zane as an artist by dropping the Lil off his name. An old tactic many labels used at the time to present something new about their artists, but for Lil Zane, this didn't work and was the reason he attributes to his sophomore album not performing so well. Fans would go to the store to buy his album in an era physical CDs were still a thing and look through the alphabetical order albums were placed in but wouldn't find Zane's. That's because, in looking in the L section and forgetting he had a recent name change, they assumed the album hadn't come out yet, all while it was under the initial Z for Simply Zane. Album 2 sold and performed poorly, leading to Lil Zane leaving the label because at that point he understood they were doing things to unintentionally sabotage his career, like the last second name change and undershipping his albums. This led to a five-year music hiatus to focus on acting instead, and pretty much that was the end of Lil Zane's popularity. Stunt number three, never finding himself. And lastly, my personal opinion of what happened to Lil Zane was that he as an artist never found or brought who he was to the table. In all his music over the years, he sounds exactly like whatever's hot at the time. His money stretch song, he's rapping like Jay-Z. On Callin' Me, completely biting Tupac, which I understand, because he actually met Pac and was told, as an impressionable kid, he reminds Pac of himself, so I get it. But longevity-wise, you have to bring who you are to the table. Later in 2007, on a track like Like This, he looks and sounds like a young T.I. when T.I. was the man in Atlanta even down to T.I.'s iconic Atlanta hat tilted to the side. I listened to a song he released a year ago and guess what he sounds like? Lil Durk, Lil Baby and the artist hot now. Even in subject matter, betrayed by a female, smoking lots of weed, popping lots of pills and I'm like Zane, you're 40 years old. You have kids near their teens, what are you doing? And this is why I think the game and Tyler made fun of him for being whack. 
because that is corny to continuously mimic others even into adult and fatherhood. He dropped the ball in the long run, never bringing who Lil Zane was to the game. All in all, Lil Zane was a victim of being introduced to business so young and impressionable. He took that meeting with Pac and completely thought he was the next Tupac, just mainstream. When that was over, he continued to mold into whatever was hot and in that way, you will never be as successful as you can because people will just go for the original. He still had a chance to make rap a career and for the most part, he did that and had some success but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, I'm out.